Hello and welcome uh, to the 2020 graduating law students, family, friends, and fans. This is our graduating ceremony where we have an opportunity to congratulate you in the terms that you have passed through during your uh, existence in your law schools. This ceremony is sponsored by the American Bar Association Criminal Justice Section and is streaming live on Facebook, as well as being recorded so that you can access it later on any of our social media sites. My name is Kim Parker and I'm the current chair of the ABA Criminal Justice Section and Council. In the Criminal Justice Section, we work collaboratively with diverse voices, diverse perspectives, and lawyers who are practicing in criminal law in positions such as prosecutors, defenders, judges, academia, and others working in assistance fields such as social work, civil rights, corrections, and as well as mental health arena. We do so to develop policy and programming to bring about meaningful change in the criminal law. This year marks our 100th anniversary of strides toward the betterment and the achievement of justice in criminal law. I hope each of you will become involved in your careers in the American Bar Association. It is a wonderful place for professional development. And I invite each of you now to sign up uh, as you enter your law career with our mentorship program, which can be found on the website of the American Bar Association Criminal Justice Section. This is an opportunity for you uh, to pair up with an experienced lawyer where you can discuss the difficulties of your career as well as celebrate the successes with someone who's been there and done that and to advise you as you develop professionally. The American Bar Association and the criminal justice section have hundreds of educational opportunities and CLE, CLE programs, and many are specifically geared toward our young lawyers and law students. Please watch our social media for a webinar, a special webinar that we've developed that will happen mid-July, titled Graduating into a Recession where you can listen, learn, engage, and interact with young lawyers who may have had a similar experience graduating during the Great Recession to the one that you may experience as you enter your career. Today, I am honored to introduce the president of the American Bar Association, Judy Perry Martinez. She is the 143rd president of this association. Judy is a New Orleans attorney who has held many leadership positions in the American Bar Association for over 30 years. But her leadership this year as president has been particularly stunning as she has boldly confronted racial injustice and the impact of the pandemic on the justice system and in, on our legal community. Judy has always been a champion for the rule of law a strong advocate for the independent judiciary, and has a long history of fighting for integrity, equality, civility, respect, and fairness in our democratic institutions. Judy is, American, is a member of the American Bar Foundation, the Louisiana Bar Foundation, and the American Law Institute. She received her undergrad degree in Juris Doctorate from the University of New Orleans and Tulane Law School. Welcome, Judy. Thank you, Kim, and thank you for inviting me to be a part of this wonderful day and this wonderful celebration. Um, I'm also honored to be here with uh, uh, Chief Justice Beasley uh, and to spend time with all of you graduates who have gathered. Uh, this is a momentous time for the American Bar Association and for our legal profession and for our nation. And you graduates are a central part of it. 
congratulations on achieving a wonderful milestone for which I know you have worked so hard. And I'm thrilled that the ABA criminal justice section is recognizing this with its first ever uh, virtual graduating ceremony uh, under the leadership of its outstanding chair, Kim Parker. None of us would have imagined even a few short months ago that we'd be coming to you in a virtual graduation ceremony. But today's new realities have opened us up in terms of what we can think about we can do and how we can go about doing our work, whether in graduation ceremonies or in everyday life as lawyers. Chief Justice Beasley, Beasley thank you so very much for joining us and your presence today is a wonderful testament about how special not only today is for all of our graduates, but importantly, how fortunate the ABA is to have you as a leader. ABA members and lawyers everywhere are especially indebted to you for your service on the ABA Standing Committee on Pro Bono and Public Service, which as its name implies, promotes a critical and enduring value for our legal profession. And we hope that all graduates who are with us today think right away about how they can become, if they haven't already, in pro bono work and public service and continue that throughout their careers. With your law degree, you gain an opportunity, a very special one, a privileged one, to make a difference in our world. And you can light the path to justice and change lives, not only because of what you know as lawyers, but because of what you believe in as lawyers, due process, equality, the right to a fair trial, accountability, freedom, fairness, equity, and so much more. You understand that justice for some is not justice at all. It is obvious for all of us that we are meeting today at the crossroads of history when it comes to justice in America. And we know that the death of George Floyd and so many other black men and women in our country at the hands of police both before them, these individuals of recent days, and now, that these are the latest in instances of centuries of violence and mistreatment against the black community, and they have us focus rightfully on what we must do to do our work better. And it's incumbent upon all of us everywhere, law students and lawyers and law graduates, to remind ourselves of this again and again, so that we can respond to the calling that beckons us as lawyers. As lawyers, we have a special responsibility to address injustice, especially injustice caused by laws that are in racist indeed or effect. So whatever your area of practice, I urge you to get involved in the ABA and in the organized bar, because we know you have something to can contribute. And the criminal justice section of the American Bar Association has for many, many decades led the ABA's efforts at criminal justice reform and has been a leader in that regard. So please follow the developments of the ABA as you go forward in your careers so that you understand how you can be a part of the criminal justice section's great work. And no matter how discouraging things may be at this moment for you, no matter how overwhelming the task at hand that you face, remember that the organized bar, your state and local and affinity bars, as well as the ABA, or your new homes, or your communities. They are the place where you go for professional development, for ethics, for mental health and well-being, and for so much more. But most importantly, we need you. We need your voice, and we need your involvement to sustain our work. It seems like yesterday that when, I, when it was that I was standing before you, uh, just like you are, at a graduation ceremony. But my yesterday is nothing like your today. The pandemic and its consequences have posed significant challenges and some unprecedented for law graduates across the country. But I know you have the determination, your commitment, your grit, and most importantly, what I know is in your hearts will see you through these moments, will see you through these challenges, and you will push through and do good for others, and in turn, good will come your way. So hats off to the class of 2020. We are all pulling for you and the world and the law awaits you, and justice needs you. Thank you, and congratulations from the American Bar Association. Thank you, President Martinez. That was amazing, and we appreciate your comments, and especially your leadership through this year, and in the many years past and forward. So, 
with a uh, special uh, event today in recognition we for our graduating law students i want to welcome and invite you to listen to the honorable sherry beasley who is the chief justice of the north carolina supreme court for 20 years, she's been dedicated to the rule of law and advocating for an independent, fair, and accessible court. Justice Beasley is the first African-American woman to serve as Chief Justice in their 200-year history in North Carolina. She was appointed last year by, the Gov by Governor Cooper and after serving seven years as an Associate Justice on the Supreme Court. Most recently, Justice Beasley became one of the first jurists in the United States to deliver a declaration against racial injustice and systemic racism in our legal system following the death of George Floyd. In March, she stood up and took divisive action to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic to reduce the spread of virus in the court system and providing guidance to the lower courts. Proceedings were postponed. Even so, she assured and made insurances that those who were suffering from emergency situations like domestic violence had the opportunity to be heard by the courts by providing a process of virtual court proceedings. So thank you, Judge Beasley, for your work. And we look forward to hearing your comments and congratulations to our graduating law students. President Martinez, Chair Parker, distinguished guests and graduates of the class of 2020. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here with you today. I know that this is not the way you envision celebrating this milestone in your lives, but I am so inspired by the way that graduating students from high school through graduate school have come together with their faculty, peers, and supporting organizations to find new and innovative ways to celebrate virtually and find togetherness in the midst of social distancing. The graduates are the stars of the show today, as they should be, but we must absolutely take a moment to thank the parents and loved ones who are with us today. You've loved your student and you've challenged them not to give up and to stay encouraged. You have been the head cheerleaders and you have been such a part of how they have faced the difficult moments in their path to this day. And you are indeed to be commended on this very special day. Graduates, I invite you now to take a moment to really think about what this journey has meant to you and all the people who have supported you. I hope you will think about just how far you've come, how much you've accomplished and how much you've grown, all of the challenges you have overcome and appreciate the fact that you didn't let anything stand in your way as you work to get to this moment. And I'm sure that it was difficult for many of you to finish your semester's online classes, but you did it anyway. You've spent the last few years retraining your brain with wonderful professors and mentors, learning to think differently, to research differently, to speak differently. You have been challenged to think deeply about the law and our system of government, and you have challenged your peers to do the same. I hope that you see the world and your place in it a little differently today than you did when you began this journey. And I hope you have a vision for what the future of our legal system should look like and the role you will play in helping to shape it. We are in the midst of a period of tremendous uncertainty and real challenges. But my prayerful hope is that you will join me in seeing it as a period filled with opportunity for exciting changes. As the COVID-19 pandemic gripped our country and brought our law schools, businesses, and daily life to a rapid halt in the early spring, court systems all across the country were confronted with difficult decisions about how to carry out our constitutional functions 
while protecting the health and safety of everyone who comes into our courthouses. Courts as an institution have historically been adverse to change, particularly abrupt change. But this pandemic has pushed us into new and innovative technological solutions to the forefront of justice and challenged us to reconsider the ways we have always done things. Both official rules and informal practices have too often impeded access to justice or caused our justice system to be less efficient and more costly. Now, as a result of efforts to protect public health, courts all across the nation are embracing changes that even a year ago might have been unimaginable. As we come together to celebrate your graduation today, I am cognizant that the date is June 19th, Juneteenth, a day when we commemorate the end of slavery in the United States. We think today about how far our society has come since the time when so many of our ancestors were held in bondage. And we also think about how far we still have to go as a nation. We must acknowledge the current societal unrest and reflect on the issues of racial justice that have led to demonstrators moving across our nation. For nearly a month, thousands of Americans of all races, creeds and ethnicities have come together every day in large cities and small towns in every corner of the country to call for change. A few weeks ago, I held a press conference to acknowledge the systemic racism that infects our courts. I did not make the decision to speak publicly about this topic lightly. Judges are usually, for good reasons, reticent to com com comment on current events. But in this moment, I could not remain silent. When people all across the nation are crying out with one voice for justice, those of us who lead courts must listen. And we must recognize that the beliefs held about unequal justice that we hear from protesters and demonstrators are supported by data that confirms that disparate outcomes for people of color in America's courts. In the weeks since the press conference, I have been heartened to see other chief justices and other Supreme Courts across the nation stepping up to speak out against systemic racism in their own courts. Their honest recognition of serious problems and their willingness to look inward for solutions has been a breath of fresh air. Because you cannot solve a problem that you're afraid to name. And solutions here are long overdue. So as you begin your career in the law, I hope that you will see yourself having a role to answer the resounding cry for justice. The truth is, that in every period of dramatic history in this country, it's been lawyers who've led the charge for change and especially young lawyers who've led the way. And we need you working for a more just legal system no matter what your position. Lawyers take an oath to do justice. All of us must think deeply about whether our actions perpetuate a system that results in racial justice and disparities. Lawyers must confront their own biases and consider how those biases impact the representation of their clients. Be mindful of how your own preconceived notions might influence your advocacy. Reflect on the metrics you use when you decide just how to fight for your clients. We all have some soul searching to do. Future litigators, there remains a shocking lack of diversity among partners in top law firms. I urge you to promote diverse voices within your law firms and your legal communities. And I encourage you to seek out pro bono services and opportunities, opportunities that lift us up and lift up marginalized communities and level the playing field for people facing systemic injustice. It is incumbent on each and every one of us to improve the legal system. And I have tremendous faith that you are going to do just that. I am so excited to see the wonderful ways you will all improve our profession and the world around us. And now graduates, it is that time that we make it official. 
Congratulations to all graduates. Please turn your tassels. Congratulations. Now go out there and change the world. Thank you.